Hey y'all, Sarah Lou Who here, and we are back again with Spirit Hunter MG. So last episode, we continued our hunt into this terrible, terrible, terrible Miruka Mansion. So we used the mask to get through a secret door, and we went through that door, but spat us right back out in the entrance hall. And uh, we were afraid there for a minute that we might be caught in the loop, but we were able to still go back outside. It just appears that the masks that we gain by helping dolls, which represent the previous victims of Miruku, the author and everything. Um, sorry, there's a lot of stuff that happened. But we use these masks to open these doors and it seems like, according to Rosé, that it brings us to like a new dimension of the house each time. And so we're technically going like layers in to each house. Um, but yeah, there are these dolls that each of them has their own little thing. Like, we had the one with the pheasant mask that was hungry, so we fed it. We had another one show up that wanted, like, a mother's love, so we put it in bed with Rosé while she stroked its head and told it was okay. We got a mask for that. And then there was another one that was like, I want school! I want the experience at school again! And we had Ban come in and be a teacher! And everything. And, uh, pretty much where we're at right now. I think the latest mask that we got was this monkey mask. We also got some hard shoes. Point two shoes. You know what? We haven't even looked through all these, have we? <laughs> hey, hard shoes. Point two shoes found near the doll wearing the monkey mask. They seem like shoes a ballerina would wear. Hmm. Which is weird, though, because wasn't... I thought the flyer was for girls too young to wear the point shoes. Alright, mask worn by the doll that appeared in the living room. Looks like a monkey. Like the pheasant mask, it appears to be meant to be hung. Sparkler, a favorite of kids in the summertime. The paper wrapping feels damp and the tip is burnt. It might still light or it might not. I don't like that it's damp. That's weird. Cassette tape, one of the victims. Oh yeah, we also found like tapes for each of the dolls. Which kind of gave us an idea of how they died. Uh, Miruku seemed to be amputating their limbs from each of them. And we had to uh, sit there and listen to that. And I think he's been doing it to try and make a doll like Kakuya. Given we have so much Kakuya stuff tied up in this case already. The hand towel we read. I'm remembering this one because it was like it's silk. And all that, but it's damaged. Dog mask. Looks like it's meant to be hung. Tape A, tape H. Pheasant mask. Like it's supposed to be hung. Incense. A bundle of pleasant smelling incense sticks. The presentation on them looks pricey. They seem like they would still burn pretty well as they're quite dry. So the opposite of the sparkler, huh? Stiff hair. I remember this one. It's like the violin string. Kina mask. This one we never got to use, which was weird. It looks like an old man's face, but part has worn off. There's a fairly large dent on the back of the mask. I wonder if that's going to be like the last one we hang. Let's see, colorful brochure. Fake on Swan Lake. Young kids whose feet will be painted yellow. Because they couldn't they were too young for the point shoes. Cute kid socks pattern of little bird wings. They're made of a thin material. They seem like it would run easily. Spray paint labeled as yellow. There still seems to be some left inside. Charcoal. This one was the expensive kind, right? It was used to eliminate odor. While it is dry, it'll take a while to get it to light. Why does it sound like I'm trying to <laughs> light stuff up here? And then, of course, our handy dandy flashlight. Anyhow. Let's go ahead and hang that monkey mask. Place the monkey mask on the frame. The entrance to the secret passageway opens. This is the same as always. Wonder if that's true for what's up ahead. I feel like Ban was trying to imply something with those words. Let's just be careful and move forward. Mysterious. Oh dear. Blood tree, let's do our thing. I step into the secret passageway and immediately notice something strange. Hey, is this? 
Yeah, there's a crap ton of blood. The walls are covered in red streaks that look like someone was cleaning off a brush. Is this blood? Y yeah. It's time to, yeah, do your thing. All right? I had just finished adjusting my breathing, so I reached toward a section of the bloodstains. Yeah. The scream shrieks down directly from above our heads. It's even more high-pitched than the one at the entrance, and it hits me like a lightning bolt. My, my vision immediately goes white. All strength drains from my limbs. Ugh, I, I have to. I have to move immediately or I'll die. But do I still have the strength to escape? What should I do? Head to the door in front, fall to the floor, or escape using the door behind. Let's try going back. Wrong! Okay, so that means I either try pressing forward into the blood, or I hit the deck. We gotta get out of here. Make our way back somehow. You ready, Ban? My voice will never be heard over this, so I yank on Ban's hand so we can try to escape. But our knees are shaking so badly, the best we can do is crawl forward. Ah! Collapse to the ground again. Ban brushes my hand aside. Meh. Ban's words don't reach me, but I can read lips. Leave me and go. No! I will never do... Lukewarm liquid gushes out my ears. My sight rapidly darkens. The screaming recedes into the darkness. Whoopsie doopsie. Well, let's try again. <laughs> Alright, and it also seems like... Let's try... Well, no, we got on the ground too. Because that's the weird thing, ain't it? It's like for even that, we tried crawling forward. We couldn't crawl forward, but we're crawling, so we're on the ground. Let's try the floor. Okay. Because we can't make it in front of us, and we couldn't make it behind us. No, I don't have enough strength to escape. Then I should choose something that will let me stall death for even a second longer. I hold my head and fall on top of a big, big bloodstain. Can I use my blood matry on it? Then? Is this the memory from that blood? My blood matry activates! The screaming voice disappears and I hear the high-pitched cry of a bird that sounds like it's communicating with others. Was that a crane cry? The friendly cranes were calling out to each other. If that's the clue to stop the sound, then what should I do? Make a crane sound? Scream. Make band scream. Play my phone's ringtone. Scream! No! Maybe the ringtone? W we need to try screaming too! Hey! Pitching my voice as high as I can, I scream at the top of my lungs. Hold it out as long as possible. But the brain-piercing screams are still as loud as ever. D damn it. It's not working. Look where I'm like, I should have my ears and I'm dead. Alright. Well, I don't imagine Ban would do much better. Oh, you cannot advance with your current partner. You can change partners at the area entrance. All right, well, we'll go with checkpoint. I guess we need a girl scream. Hey, let's hey, let's do this. Yeah, I want to switch. Same as ever. All right, let's get going, guys. We got bloodstains to worry about. <laughs> it was kind of us to tell us, though, that we needed rose, wasn't it? Alright, so. Fall to the floor, touch the bloodstain, and make rose scream. <laughs> Go! 
Gotta get that high pitch! Cranes were crying out to each other. Make Rose scream! Hey, hey, Rose! I tell Rose to scream through gestures. Scream! Pretend you're a bird and scream! It looks like my message gets through because Rose rears back and screams. However, I can't hear it at all. D damn it, I guess this is it. My despair turns to resignation and then my consciousness leaves me. Same as me? That's all I hear as I slip into the darkness. An unknown amount of time passes and someone's voice brings me back to my senses. Alright, oh goodness. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm having a blank moment here. One second. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. Are you awake, Osborne? I take a second to gather my senses. Like, I know her voice, it's just I was having like such a weird brain fart there for a second. Did the screaming stop? Stop. Stop, it needed to stop. What are you talking about? Yeah, it stopped, thanks to your advice. And, well, also thanks to my voice training, I never knew I could scream so loudly. So that means... I see, so we're saved. Unfortunately, this is neither heaven nor the river sticks. We are still living in, uh, this current life. As long as I'm alive, I don't care. Clear. Anyway. I look up at the ceiling of the passageway. That scream came from directly above us, right? Yeah, that's what it felt like. I guess that there's a room above here. But it doesn't look like there's a ladder hidden anywhere. <laughs> hey, are you alright? Yeah, it's nothing too serious. I just uh, strained my throat from all that screaming. I watch Rosé rubbing her throat. I can tell she had yelled herself raw. Which is to be expected after belting out a scream like that. I never ex I never expected that I would have to match a crane's cry with just my voice. Some pieces mimic cranes and... Sakushakuhachi or Kukuyu? I don't know, but I've never heard it done vocally. Shakuhachi is the flute made of bamboo, right? What is Kukuyu again? Hmm... You're a high schooler, so what's a crude comparison I could give you? It's like a Japanese violin. You pluck the pulled strings with the bow to make sounds, so it's very similar to the violin. I see, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, please embrace knowledge. I also hope that your desire to learn will be reflected on your next report card. Now let's make let's get back to investigating. Okay, so you can play teacher here, you couldn't play it earlier though. Yeah, we're still running out of time. The other Miruku residents uh, should be just ahead, right? True. Well, then let's go. The fourth lair. Just as we thought, the secret passage connects to the front entrance of the Miruku residence. But the entrance here has an obvious difference to the front entrance from earlier. Hey, look. There are more of those frames. I see. This is starting to get interesting. Let's get the mask out. At that moment, the cell phone vibrated. Right, it's almost. Pity, we're out of time for tonight. Hey, it's me. Time to get out of there. Alright, let's go back. This is pretty good for today. Let's go. We'll continue this another night. Hey, Ben, we're back. <clears throat> hey, Rosé, what's wrong with your voice? What happened? Were you rocking out or something? Osborne, I'll leave this one to you. Hmm. This feels like an instance of we're not going to be able to use her screaming again. <laughs> Let me go back a little here. See how far back I can go anyway. Cause she was talking about two different instruments, right? Let's 
Some pieces mimic cranes. Japanese violin. And we do have... You pluck the strings with a bow to make it... To make sound, so it's very similar to the violin. Because we do have that horse hair and stuff, which compared to violin string stuff. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Anywho, at this point, I'll leave this one to you. You explain how I saved us. <laughs> eh. Where you she? We tell him what happened in the mansion. Three dolls, three tapes, and the screaming in the hidden passageway. I mean, you were there for some of it. Not scream again, huh? Yeah, but this was worse than before. It was trying to kill us. <laughs> this might seem rude to Rose, but I'm really glad I didn't go with you. Squawking like a bird just isn't for me. If it was you and me, we'd probably be dead right about now. In another life. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, give me a break. I'm not dying an unsatisfying death like that. <laughs> Getting back to what we uncovered tonight, those three tapes are fascinating. Each one recorded a man dismembering a girl as she screamed and pleaded. What a grotesque hobby. However, he didn't seem like he was just a sadistic deviant. He sounded pretty calm and kept saying things like, I want to make it so you don't die. He also seemed to be very knowledgeable about what he was doing. So it's uh, pretty likely that Miruki's on these tapes. Before he became a children's author, he wanted to be a surgeon. Dots connect. If I recall, Miruku wrote horror-themed fairy tales. I'm quite curious to see how he tied the dismemberments into his work. Tch. I'm absolutely fine. I've never known the answer to that. I've read some of his major works myself, but there wasn't anything as weird as that in them. I don't know about his other books, though. Most of his stuff's out of print. It seems we've been, we'd be more likely to find his insanity and inquisitiveness in his minor works then. Hey, Osborne. From what I heard from Ben, your aunt's also a horror novelist. You don't mean you want me to ask her about Yakuma Mariku? Uh, she might know some dark tidbits that only someone who's troubled in his circles would know. We won't know unless we try. See what happens when you ask her casually. Well, seeing as I was pissy with you before, I'll be fine with you now. My, my, it looks like you're curious, too. Alright, enough chat for today. Time to split up. Getting called in for questioning would be a real pain. Alright, it's up to you, Osborne. Au revoir. I say goodbye to them and return to Kasuji Station, heading over to the Black Rabbit. I wonder if Aunt Natsumi will be there. Oh, Ozzy, what are you doing here at this hour? I could ask the same of you. Her cheeks are looking kind of reddish and her eyes are cloudy. Stop getting drunk! <laughs> she must have had quite a bit to drink. Supper, lady, have her drink yourself. No, I'm not going to. I am a high school student. I shall not be drinking. You're worried about me. I guess you and Satomi are like that way. I don't want to talk about my mom. I don't have any good memories of my life with my real mother. She was nice enough, but she couldn't hold down a job, so we lived in poverty. So I despise her for that, I guess. Until Amanomi helped me find a part-time job, there were even days when we didn't eat. Anyway, uh, there's something I want to ask you. Do you know about an author called Yakumo Muruku? Huh? Where do you hear that name? A friend of mine is interested in him. Thought you might know him since you write horror novels. Oh, is that so? Yes, I know Muruku well. I loved his books when I was younger. Aunt Natsumi starts talking about talking without me having to lead her much. Probably because she's drunk. Nobody could deny her the right to occasionally drink her pain away for at least a little while. No long term stuff, Natsumi. Miruku, um, used existing fairy tales as motifs to build his own horror books. Did you know? The Grimm's fairy tales originally had some horrible scenes in them. Children play at murder? The famous story of Cinderella is no exception. Her stepsisters cut their feet to try and make the glass slipper fit. They cut their own feet? Haven't heard that one before. 
Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Even if they were doing it to try and marry a prince, that's some serious resolve. Eh. It's probably just coincidence that she chose that particular example. But after listening to those tapes, oh yeah, that. I can see why they went with that one. And so it's just like, it's such a common thing whenever you're talking about the Brothers Grimm. Hey, you know the stepsisters cut off their feet? It's like, yeah, did you hear about the one where, you know, they had, like, what was it? There was one... It's kind of like a Bluebeard style story almost, but this chick like shows up at a house and finds out that he's like planning to cannibalize her because the sausages talk to her or something like that. And the sausages are his previous victims, I think. It's something like that anyway. It's also a show and play at murder. Kid kills another kid and then like picks an apple or something because it's supposed to be good. I don't know. <laughs> it was a weird story. But um, anyway, after listening to those tapes, it didn't leave me with a good feeling. When I was a schoolgirl, I was obsessed with Miruku's dark fairy tale series. <laughs> he put some bold, dark spins on Japanese folk tales, just like the Grimm brothers. His unique settings and descriptions earned him a lot of passionate fans. He was pretty amazing, huh? Yes, in some sense, he's a genius. Because they're children's stories, they have an informal style, and yet they're so realistic. His descriptions of bone, flesh, and blood were so vivid they sent chills up my spine. So basically, he wrote scary stories to tell in the dark. <laughs> you don't say. I'm sure Miruku knew a ton about bone, flesh, and blood. Miruku studied medicine before- oh, sorry. Miruku studied medicine before he became an author. I'm sure he was influenced by that. It's pretty weird for a doctor to become an author. His family might have pushed him to become a doctor against his wishes. A lot of his relatives are important members of society. He himself hated worldly things like fame and money. Is that enough background on Miruku? Yeah, that's enough. I didn't think you'd know so much about him. He was my inspiration to become a horror novelist. But I have to say that Satomi was a much more passionate fan of his than I was. I remember that she'd go to great lengths to learn more about him. My mom was that interested in him, huh? I thought Yakumo Miruku was a total stranger, but now I'm learning that he's surprisingly connected through my aunt and late mother. We've been talking for a while now. You should get home. You're gonna stay here long? Yeah. Even if I went home, Ami's not there anyway. Aunt Natsumi. I'm going to lie down in the back. After all, I'll be busy first thing in the morning. Good night. She gets up and walks unsteadily to the inner door, disappearing behind it. Sleep on your side, please. I lock the front door of the Black Rabbit and start walking home. As I stroll down the dark roads, I pray that Aunt Natsumi can get some sleep. Well, nothing going on with the phone booth today, it looks like. Yep. I always mean to go the other way. It's just weird that it's making us go the whole way. Yeah. D man? Text? Probably D man. Over in the message. D-Man! D-Mail number seven. How are you? It's D-Man. I prepared your next riddle. Feed the souls of triplets to the monster that consumes souls. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh... Well, let's go start clicking on shit. <laughs> Alright. Signs, do you consume souls? Poster for hiring part time. Man, it's horrible. Banner. Hey, do you guys consume souls? I mean, your trash cans, you consume something. I searched for trash cans by the convenience store. Damn it, why the hell am I doing this again? 
Light catches on something in the trash. Ha! Ah, that's gotta be it. In each of the trash bins, there's coins mixed in with the trash. Obtain three coins. Okay, so I got to put coins in something. Cashier? Hi, welcome! But do you like some coins? No? Okay. I need something that takes coins. Photo booth, maybe? That's the only thing I can think of. Yep, coin operated. Um. Have some coins! Enter the booth and insert the three coins into the slot. Get coins used! Then. My eyes! Suddenly the machine whirs to life. Wait, what the hell? Stepping out, I find a card in the picture pickup slot. Alright, what we got here? D card. I alarm my gaze to the writing on the card. Spirit Memoir 7 1, Rabbit Island, southeast of Tokyo, at the end of the Uzu Island chain. An Izu? Whatever. An island made up of 100 tiny islands isn't on any map. It's called Rabbit Island. Currently uninhabited, the factories and ruins there indicate people had lived there previously. This is a real island, I'm pretty sure. Like, there's this and there's like a cat one as well. But anyway. The only residents are numerous rabbits. And it's said that travelers and fishermen who visit them are welcomed by them. Yeah, because they don't have any fear of predators because they're the only things on the island. Upon further investigation, I couldn't find anyone who had visited when the rumor had spread or where it came from. Wait, what? But it's like a real island. I'm like 90% sure of this. <laughs> Rabbit Island, Japan. Yeah, it's called like Okinoshima. Okunoshima? I don't know. Anywho, but it's like a legit island. People visit it all the time. <laughs> Alright. Anywho. Not in this universe, though. Um, when the rumor is spread or where it came from, official agencies gave me the cold shoulder. Thanks to Mr. K, the investigations has made significant pro uh, progress in recent years. His family used to supply the military during the war, mostly with antiquities. The only living items around ten rabbits Mr. K's grandfather raised as a hobby... What the military did with them was, is unknown, but soon after the war, the family received a request to retrieve them. The letter only had a map with an X marked on a patch of the ocean. Mr. K and his grandfather had always thought the rabbits had drowned along, along, along with a warship. But I realized something when he showed me the map. That's right, it was the location of the rumored Rabbit Island. Things got strange after that. Mr. K, the ex-detective, and I decided to head to the last of the Easy Islands. Uh, with some assistance. Now that I think about it, Mr. K had a bad feeling about it, which ended up being proven correct. But I won't tell you the source of his bad feeling for now. The island was indeed there and full of rabbits. We discovered that the place felt frozen in time. Memories of a horrific battle remained. Human experiments, cannibalism, atrocities beyond imagination made it natural. A natural Eichmann site, sorry. It's uh, slightly different from what you're facing now. Dude, I want to know this stuff. <laughs> so I want to see these cases. I wonder if this is going to be with the third game. And this is just like a little teaser, but why? If he's going to explain it, then maybe not. Maybe it's just a little fun filler. Man, he's putting some serious effort into this. Pah, guess I'll go home. They are getting a bit more extreme. Like, I have tasks to do now. I solved D-Man's riddle, so I head home feeling pretty satisfied with myself. Spirit author. Screaming author rumor notes. Don't. Oh, I need to read that. Oh, I'll read that in a moment. <laughs> I mean, I'll read that after I end the episode, but oh. Scream. It probably says don't look or something or don't peek, whatever she said, because I definitely got that don't. Anywho. Ruminats 5. Several tapes contain terrifying yelling of kill. Little girl kidnapped. Her arms and legs were severed. I want to make sure she won't die. What does that mean? I heard the scream of the screaming author. Rosé screamed back. Would I have died if she had it? Yes, yes, you would have. Ah, man, I'm tired. Oh, look. 
Got another call. Who could be calling this late? Hello? Hey, who the hell are you? You better cut this out. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. It's fine. Damn it. It's the one from yesterday. Bet I'll be waiting for a call all night again. May as well take a shower first. May as well save the game first. Alright, so thoughts and opinions. Hmm. I find it interesting that Aunt Natsumi was so obsessed with him. Well, she says our mom was also obsessed with him, so I guess they were both kind of obsessed with him. Anything, because I'm always suspecting that he's heavily involved with Kukuya somehow, but I wonder... Because she said she was a fan of him when she was young and that he was her inspiration, but... She didn't say anything about meeting him, did she? And stuff, because if he... You know, saw her, saw Ami, you know, that would be his type of victim, wouldn't it? Especially because Suzuki said that, you know, she'd be a good dancer and all that as well. It seems like the type he'd take interest in. But, who knows? Hmm. Because I'm feeling like that would be what would, you know, send Kakuya to us. If there was a reason for Kakuya to go to us. Just being as something as simple as, you know, spotting a stranger in the crowd, huh? Because it feels weird for it to be so random. Like, Eddie's wasn't random at all. His whole case was, you know, the plot of years of vengeance and everything. It would be weird if, you know, Ozzy was just, hey, you got picked at random. But we'll see. We'll see how things go. Um, so that's it for this episode. Next time, we'll investigate a little bit more about this whole situation. So until then, like and subscribe if you want to, and thank you for watching.